From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Morning Line with Nick Barris. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Morning Line. I'm Nick Barris with you on this Wednesday. And you're up bright and early today. Um, because of where we have our clock set right now, we're supposed to have more daylight, right? You know all about daylight saving time and falling back, springing forward. I don't know about you, but it's like 4.30 in the afternoon and it's dark and I feel like it's 10 and I go to bed by 6. Do you have that problem? I mean, this all feeds into how we set our clocks and what we want to do with whether or not we continue doing that or leaving the clocks in one place and staying with the time and not changing it every year twice. And this is something so many of you have messaged me on Facebook every year. There's someone, you know, contacting me about, hey, is is Congress getting rid of daylight saving time and all of that? Um, and as it stands right now, we still have it, of course, and uh, that's what we're living under now. But there's a lot of discussion that way, and there's some good reasons maybe to consider making a change. We're going to talk about that today, and I invite you to offer your opinion if you'd like to join in the conversation, 737-7587. With our guest this morning, um, she's a sleep expert, and obviously time changes can have an impact on how you sleep, among other things. Dr. Beth Mallow's with us from over at Vanderbilt. How are you? I'm, I'm good. It's good to have you on. And so you're at Vanderbilt Medical Center. You're in the sleep study program there? or sleep? I'm in the sleep division. Division? Yeah. Okay. And, and, and would you say then, I guess, there's a direct correlation between people's quality of sleep, which is one factor with all of this we're talking about, and, and daylight saving time, and, and when we set our clocks, and what time it gets dark and light? Yes, yes. With daylight saving time, what we're doing is we're, in a way, artificially moving our clocks forward in March, mm -hmm. and then we move them back in November, and it can be pretty disruptive to a lot of people. It's a change. All right. Now, before we get into, you know, your thoughts on what we should do and how this plays out, let's explain maybe the thinking behind the fact that we change back and forth. I guess the goal as each season comes around, as you said, twice a year, is to try to um, get the most daylight when people are awake as possible, right? That's correct. The reason it came about was actually during the wars, World War One mm. and World War Two. Europe was doing it and then we did it. And the idea was to actually save energy oh. and to have light later in the day so you don't so have to turn on your lights. It exactly. Means daylight. Exactly. And what we found was people didn't like it. So after each war, we went back to what we were doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in the 60s, after everybody was doing all different things all throughout the country, and it was very disruptive to commerce and to the trains and everything else, mm -hmm. we went to this Uniform Time Act. It was in the 1960s. And Congress basically said, look, we're going to do daylight saving time for part of the year, not the whole year. We'll go, uh, initially it was April through October. Okay. We'll move our clocks forward, and then we'll move them back in October. And you can opt out if you want and two states actually did they yeah. they Arizona okay. and Hawaii said we're just gonna stay on standard time all year and they have continued to stay on standard time all year and so it's not a federal law it can be the states that make that choice well this is the really interesting okay. thing if you want to opt out and stay on standard time all year round which by the way is what we're on right now with what we're on right now okay. is the permanent well the standard time until March when we move forward again. Gotcha. All right. You can opt out as a state, but if you want to go to the permanent daylight saving time and be an hour later all year long, you can't do it. You need an act of Congress. Okay. So if you really want to be empowered as a state, you would go for the standard. You would say, let's stop going back and forth. Most people are tired of it. Mm -hmm. And say, I'm just going to stay on standard time, and I can do that without the government telling me what to do. Okay, which might be the way, because we all know an act of Congress, just getting right. anything through is a pain. And so some states have done that, or two, you said. All right, um, everyone reacts differently to this. For whatever reason, I'm an individual who's you know, susceptible to the power of suggestion. And the truth is, if someone in the middle of the night snuck into my bedroom and adjusted my clocks and my cell phone somehow got changed, and I woke up and it said 8 o'clock when it really was 7 o'clock, or even maybe two hours difference, unless there's heavy-duty jet lag when you travel to Europe or something, 
I probably would function through that day thinking I got the full amount of sleep that I thought I was. I might feel a little tired later, but I wouldn't know it because all I do is I look at that and I realize, okay, I went to bed at this time and it's eight now. That's how much sleep I got. And my mind in a placebo effect is telling me I got enough. So I'm one of these people that, to be honest with you, except for the darkness that I hate at 4.30, it's so dark. Daylight savings, I just, I don't care. I, right. I just don't care. It doesn't affect me one way or the other. I think maybe you're going to say that I'm an exception to the rule and that you see an awful lot of people have their lives kind of shook up twice a year because of this and it takes a while for them to adapt. I'm going to say that some people are like you. Okay. I, I think there's a lot of variability. It also depends. I, I admire you because you have to wake up early. Some yeah. people, if you wake up at 9 o'clock in the morning or 8 o'clock and it's already light out. Uh, you're going to be fine. It's the it's the students. It's the kids who have okay. to get on the bus early for school and being in the pitch black. It's our essential workers who have to be at some job at six thirty or seven in the morning. They're the ones who really struggle okay. uh, with the dark and during you know particularly during this part of the year. The way I like to explain it's true. it. It's true. By yeah. the way, I get yeah. in here as you said early. I get here at four. So when I get here, it's dark. And on days when I'm working a full long day doing doing reporting for the evening news as well, I leave and it's dark. Right. So I don't see any right. daylight, unless I go out on a story, and sometimes during the day I do, other times I'm in the house, but I'm literally here from dark and then I leave at 4.30 maybe. And yeah. it's so dark already. See, we can't solve that problem. I wish we could. Okay. I wish we could have more light in the winter, but the argument, yeah. I mean, I think there's Never. two things. The, okay. the It does, it is a sudden jolt to people. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I find regardless of whether it's it's the spring or the fall. Like I'll even give an example with the fall because we were suddenly thrust back into standard time from yeah. daylight time. When I was driving the week after we turned the clocks back, it was dark an hour earlier, yeah. and uh, it traffic. You know, the idea of you're not as vigilant, whatever. That's a problem. However, mm. if we were to stay on one thing all year round, we wouldn't have those jolts. It would have been a gradual darkness and we wouldn't have had the same jolt to our system. Right. Similarly in the spring, it's a jolt to our system because we lose that hour of sleep and it's suddenly dark in the morning and the mm -hmm. same thing can happen with the accidents. And, and traffic accidents have been more of a wash. What, where we've seen the real benefit to having the light in the morning, which is what standard time gives us, is in health. We've seen where sleep is better, people sleep more. Uh, we uh, need that light for mood, you mentioned. Okay, depression, you know, the idea, things like this depression. That come into play. We treat the seasonal affective disorder when it's people get depressed mm -hmm. in the winter because there's not enough light. We treat that with light boxes in the morning. So the idea right. of maximizing our light in the morning, which is what, I mean, I think we need to stop going back and forth. And as a sleep doctor, most of us, most sleep specialists, I think practically all are advocating for the, the and permanent I'll standard. I'll tell you, I think if I agree with you, and I think if this went to a referendum nationwide, I think the majority of Americans would probably say, let's just leave it as is and stop going back and forth. And I yeah. think we'll take some calls this morning. I want to know what our viewers think. Do you like it or not? Would you like the clocks to be set and stay the same? Is there, and I know you're in favor of it remaining yeah. one, but if that happened, are there some who would point out anything that would be lost by going to that room? What, yeah. Maybe you don't agree with it right. overall, but what right. are the advantages to changing both times? No, no, I agree that there are, if, if it wasn't a controversial issue, yeah. we wouldn't be talking about it. We would hopefully have done it by now. I think right. the biggest thing, like what you said, you're in a job all day, you get out, in the late afternoon mm -hmm. and you want some light yeah. you want that light i get that too okay. i wish we could make the days longer uh it, it is a challenge i i will say that i love to run mm -hmm. and one of the things that a lot of people talk about is getting out of work and running or playing gone. golf or playing sure. tennis i will say though that what i found over the years is like over the summer it was super hot in the afternoon mm -hmm. and it's getting hotter every year and what happens is 
people are actually shifting their patterns. Like in Arizona, for example, where they're on permanent standard time, they've opted out. They play golf in the morning before work because they couldn't play golf in the afternoon. It would too be hot. too oppressive and too yep. hot. So we adjust sometimes our patterns. I would love it if we as a country went to permanent standard time to say, you know, let's finish work at four, four o'clock and get out there yeah, and get, get some light. Get done earlier, maybe. Get done if we earlier. Did All right, we'll take a break on that note. Uh, we'll come back. We'll get into a lot more. Some of the effects that you see with sleep, seasonal depression you touched on. What light boxes are. We'll explain that to folks as well. And then we'll take a few phone calls. The number is 737-7587. I know many of you have contacted me, I think, are in agreement with her. And frankly, with me, as I said, it doesn't really matter to me one way or the other. If we get rid of it, I'm fine with it, too. I don't really care, but I know a lot of people do. So, you know, what do you think? You want to stay the same, or would you like to go and just stay standard all the time like they do in Arizona or Hawaii? We'll be back with more and our guest right after this.